I'm Phil Spencer and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how Middlesbrough have been given a surprise windfall as a result of an England call-up. Um, that comes after Morgan Rogers was uh, handed a call to uh, to Lee Carsley's senior setup for the upcoming Nations League clashes with uh, with Greece and with Ireland. Um, those matches will come over the uh, the next couple of uh, next couple of days. And for Rogers, it's an opportunity to uh, to continue a really impressive year for him, um, in which he's uh, gone from playing in the Championship to the Premier League, to the Champions League, and now to the international stage, uh, where he'll be hoping to uh, to make his, his first senior um, appearance with his first senior cap um, for England, which will be uh, brilliant news for him and what has been an absolutely outstanding year. Um, if you are enjoying this content, then please do hit like and hit subscribe as well. Um, I really appreciate your support. And for Middlesbrough, this news is going to be a really, really good piece of uh, business because what we're going to be seeing is a, a surprise windfall coming Middlesbrough's way in the way of a seven-figure sum, which I will get onto just in a bit. Now, since Rogers uh, left Middlesbrough um, tw just under 12 months ago, things have really, really gone to plan for him. Um, he joined Middlesbrough in the, uh, the summer of 2023. Um, he arrived for a, an undisclosed fee from Manchester City. Um, it was a similar sort of deal to, um, I guess, to that which uh, saw Mika Hamilton join Middlesbrough um, over the summer just gone. He was, uh, he was a highly rated talent at Man City, but uh, first team opportunities never really looked like they were going to be um, sustainably forthcoming. So as uh, so Middlesbrough swooped in, um, as they uh, sort of have done with a number of talented young players um, since Kieran Scott took charge as, uh, as a director of football, um, he came into the club as a uh, as a raw, I guess, unpolished gem, you could say. And um, when he arrived at the club, he uh, he came in. He uh, he did well in pre season. Um, he came straight into the uh, the first team at the Riverside, and uh, you got to say that he he was a little bit raw at the start. He was clearly a talent. He was someone who liked to get on the ball, run at defenders. His his final ball was a little bit lacking. He sometimes tried to do um, a little bit too much. Uh, when he did get on the ball, but um, ultimately it was uh, kind of seen as a signing where he was going to develop and hopefully develop into a, a top-level talent um, over the years that would follow. Now, in this time at Middlesbrough, it was, uh, was short-lived, really. Um, he only actually ended up spending six months at the club. Such was the, uh, the I guess, the trajectory of his, of his progress because he did so, so well. Um, he went from being a, a squad player at the start of the season to being a, a first team regular and um, someone who uh, went on to become the other uh, top scorer um, in the Carabao Cup last season. Obviously, Middlesbrough went um, all the way to the semi-finals when they played Chelsea. Um, and Morgan Rogers was the, uh, the highest scorer, having played um, quite frequently during the competition and playing a big part in Middlesbrough's success. And as you can see in the numbers on them. Um, on your screen just there, it was, uh, it was a successful time for him. He made 33 appearances um, in that first half of the season, which shows just how many matches Middlesbrough play um, in the uh, in the second tier. And obviously the cup fixtures kind of contributed to that as well. Um, he scored seven goals along the way, um, contributed nine assists, which is really good going as well for a player who um, yeah just proved that he was a real all-round threat in attack. He wasn't just someone who was out for himself looking to score goals. Um, he linked up really well with the players around him. Um, you've got to think as well, the first half of last season wasn't great for Middlesbrough either. A lot of it was really quite um, disjointed and not very good. Um, Emmanuel Latilath wasn't uh, performing. At that point, he was still adapting to life at the club. Um, Josh Coburn was playing um, the vast majority of games, you've got to say, as, uh, as a centre forward. Um, there was a bit of pressure building on Michael Carrick. Everyone remembers that um, that, that night at, um, at Sheffield Wednesday and how bad Middlesbrough were. But Morgan Rodgers was, was one of the other uh, few players to, uh, to come out of those few months with, um, with any sort of credit, really. Such was his... Um, level of performance, the improvements that he made. And as, as I mentioned before, he was quite raw when he first came to the club. Uh, but over that time, he did sort of start to polish up his game. And so by the time we got to uh, uh, November or December, he really was one of Middlesbrough's most um, effective um, attacking outlets. Now, obviously, as we moved into January, it was like it was fairly inevitable. I guess that Premier League clubs would start to uh, to come sniffing around, and um, it's always the way in the Championship that if someone um, performs well, um, then interest from bigger clubs does tend to uh, to come in. Uh, and Morgan Rogers was was no different, really. Clubs started to come in. Aston Villa showed that they were interested very early on, and for Morgan Rogers, it was a move that made complete sense. He's um, he's a Birmingham lad, and um, he's an Aston Villa supporter, and obviously the opportunity to get back into the Premier League, where every player wants to play, um, was one that proved to be too good to, uh, to turn down and Middlesbrough and um, they played hardball with Aston Villa they made sure that they got the uh, the best possible fee um, around for him and um, yeah ultimately Morgan Rogers moved on and it was then up to him to uh, to try and 
break into uh, break into things at Aston Villa. Aston Villa were doing quite well in the in the Premier League. They were in the chasing pack for the uh, the Champions League under um, Unai Emery, and so it was going to be a really big challenge for Morgan Rogers to uh, to break in, but a, a challenge that he ultimately wanted to take on, and one which, as we can see from these numbers, uh, was something that he took on and um, really excelled in. Um, I'll be completely honest. I think when Morgan Rogers went to Aston Villa, I did sort of think that it might be too soon for him. It might be a move that um, might not quite work out for him. I thought he might be limited to sub appearances and cameo appearances here and there. It might end up with getting to the the summer and um, him going back on loan to the Championship or to a, a lower a lower table Premier League club. But he really just took to life in the Premier League like a duck to water. I think, being honest, I think looking at these numbers, that they, they don't really do his performances. Um, sort of justice, really. Um, his influence in that team, he was playing, um, or he still is, I guess, playing as a, a sort of number 10 in and around Ollie Watkins. Ollie Watkins had a sensational season last term and Morgan Rogers just slotted into that team so seamlessly. Um, his goals and assists, they, they have started to come a little bit this season. Um, those numbers, as I say, are probably lower than what, um, what he deserves because he's been so good. He's been so influential at Aston Villa. And as you can see, as well as playing in the Premier League and uh, getting a few goals there. Um, he's also played in the Champions League, made four appearances there with, with an assist, played in the Conference League um, last season as well. And so basically what he's done over the last 12 months has just been quite incredible. That rise from being, I don't know, he was on loan at Blackpool before he, uh, before he came to Middlesbrough, came to Middlesbrough, had to adapt to life in the Championship because he was no proven performer at that level. Did that with Middlesbrough, adapted to life in the Premier League with Aston Villa. Now he's playing regularly in the Champions League, and uh, ultimately, as we've said, um, he's received a uh, an England call. Such have been the uh, the level of his performances, which is um, completely deserved because he's been such a good performer for Aston Villa. Really consistent as well. He's not someone who flits in and out of games. He's someone who knows his qualities. Someone who likes to get on the ball, and his consistency in the eleven months since he moved to Aston Villa has been quite astounding, really, for such a young player. Now. The question that all Middlesbrough fans want to know is um, what will it mean for Middlesbrough? Uh, the fact that he's been called up for the England squad. Now, the move that took the, the, these uh, two extracts are taken from a couple of articles which have come out in the, uh, the last couple of days. The top one um, is from the Northern Echo, uh, an article written by Dom Shaw in which he confirmed that um, his, uh, his, his England honours and winning his first England cap will trigger a further payment from Aston Villa as part of the deal. Um, that took him to, uh, to to Villa Park in January. Um, obviously, the, the part of the other transfer fee was it was uh, eight million pounds, as you can see in the second part. It was an eight million pounds um, initial fee that was paid by Aston Villa with a further seven further seven million pounds, sorry, um, in potential add-ons. Now, part of those add-ons came when Aston Villa qualified for the Champions League, and um, that earned Middlesbrough a significant um, sum of money, um, a seven-figure sum. Um, and the second part of those add-ons have come as a result of Morgan Rogers, um, not in being called up to the England squad, but I think if he makes his uh, first England appearance, if he wins a cap, um, then that add-on will be, uh, be triggered as well. So that in total would mean that Middlesbrough have earned £15 million pounds, um, from the deal to sign more, uh, from the deal to sell Morgan Rogers. Sorry, um, that's an additional £7 million from what we'd earned already in January, which is pretty amazing. The fact that a lot of transfer deals these days, they do have um, these add-ons in there. Um, I think every player like negotiates them into their deal with with goal bonuses and um, or like I don't know, goal landmarks triggering additional transfer fees to the selling club, um, international call-ups, international goals, trophy wins, all of those things kind of contribute to, uh, to added fees in a lot of deals these days. But it's really rare that uh, so many of the clauses have been triggered within uh, within a 12-month period. And that, that just goes to show just how well Middlesbrough did in negotiating this deal. Yes, the initial £8 million pounds was uh, seen as a little bit low, you've got to say, at the time, um, for a player who um, was really starting to show his qualities and who Middlesbrough fans knew could go on to play in the Premier League. But now the fact that Middlesbrough have earned potentially a, an additional £7 million pounds, um, in add-ons in the time since then um, just shows how good a deal it was for Middlesbrough. Um, it's a move that's really worked out from uh, from Middlesbrough's point of view because, yeah, they've, they've attracted this sum of money. Uh, Middlesbrough have been able to, to reinvest it in the squad. They went straight out and they uh, well, they signed Finn Azaz from, uh, from Aston Villa. He'd been on loan at Plymouth and he came into uh, the Riverside from Aston Villa on a permanent deal. Um, you look towards um, the summer that's, uh, that's just gone and there's been another couple of 
really attacking, uh, really exciting attacking signings who've uh, come into the club. Tommy Conway came from Bristol City. Um, Aidan Morris came from the MLS as a central midfielder. Mika Hamilton came from Man City. Um, there's been some, yeah, some excellent signings. The Middlesbrough have really put that money to good use. And so you've got to say that it's just a deal that has worked out incredibly well for all parties. Um, Aston Villa, they'll be more than happy, uh, even with the add-ons, a £15 million deal to sign a player who was taken to life in the Premier League like a duck to water, been playing in the Champions League, is now set to become an England international. That represents great business for them. Morgan Rogers, he uh, he enjoyed his time at Middlesbrough, but he's got his move to the Premier League. And boy, has he taken his opportunity to shine um, in the top flight in Middlesbrough. As we said, they've, they've recouped a, a £15 million fee for a player who they, they signed for an undisclosed fee. It won't have been any more than maybe two, three million pounds maximum. So they've made a, a pretty tidy profit on a, a player who was only at the club for six months. Um, so that's a really good deal from Middlesbrough's point of view. And they have been able to use that money to reinvest in a side who are um, now brimming with attacking talent. It's, it's still clicking into place for Michael Carrick's team in the in the present day. Uh, but all of those players have a, have a really high ceiling and all of those players could potentially take Middlesbrough to the Premier League or if not, they could be sold on for a uh, a pretty hefty profit themselves. So a good deal all round, certainly for Middlesbrough, who are going to be raking it in. Um, if Morgan Rogers does make an appearance in the, uh, the next week or so in these uh, games against Greece and... Um, in Ireland. So uh, yeah, win, win, win all round for, uh, for Middlesbrough. So yeah, I'm really interested to hear what you think about the deal to um, to sell Morgan Rogers. I appreciate he was only at the club for, for six months and fans will have been disappointed to, uh, to see him leave the club um, after just six months. They might have wanted him to stick around for, for a full season to see what he could do in terms of helping Middlesbrough um, get into the top six last season. But was it good business for Middlesbrough? Were you happy with the deal to take Morgan Rogers to Aston Villa? Um, drop into the comments below. Let me know what you think of the deal and whether the uh, the, the deal has represented good value for money from your point of view. I personally think it has. Uh, but drop in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Um, and if you have enjoyed this video, uh, please do hit like on the uh, on the video and uh, hit subscribe as well. There's going to be plenty more Middlesbrough content coming um, over the other uh, coming weeks and months. So um, yeah, really appreciate you tuning in for this video. Um, take care, and I will catch up with you very soon.